Good morning students. How are you all? Fine. I hope you are all doing fine students. And first let me introduce myself. I am Kurtishwari from Arihant College of Education. And today I am going to take science for you all. So before going to the topic, I will be showing you a picture. You have to identify what is there. What is this picture? Yes, this is a food pyramid. In this pyramid, what you all see? So, different types of foods. What are all the different types of foods you know students? Carbohydrates, proteins and fats. Very good. If all these carbohydrates, fats and proteins are given in proper value and proper quantity, all the child and all the students will be healthy. Isn't it? Everybody will be healthy. And tell me students, what is the name that is given to this diet which contains all type of nutrients? What is it called as? Balanced diet. A balanced diet, it contains all the nutrients in it. Yes? Now, let me show you another picture. What do you see in this picture? Yes, he is a malnourished child. Yes. Why he is malnourished? What he, what it is lacking in his diet? Nutrition. He is very poor. So he is, he is not able to have proper nutrition. So nutrition is essential for even for human beings and for plants also students. Nutrition is essential for plants for their growth and development. So today let us see different topics related to nutrition nutrition autotropic nutrition transport system in plants biological fixation of nitrogen and symbiotic nutrition these are all the topics that today we are going to cover okay first let us see the definition of nutrition the process of taking in and using food which takes place in living organisms is called nutrition. So the process we are taking in food that is only in living organisms then it is called as nutrition. The substances which are digested and assimilated. So what are all the foods that we are taking these nutrients? Nutrients is different from nutrition. Yes, nutrients means which contains all the different types of foods that I told before. Carbohydrates, proteins and fats. Nutrition is a process by which the living organisms take their food. So after having a nutritious food, the food gets digested and assimilated. Why it is assimilated? Assimilated means to get gather it at one point for obtaining energy we eat food to get energy so that we can do our work if one day if you're not if you are starving if you are keeping yourself fasting you're not able to do the work because you don't have energy so energy is got from food that is especially from carbohydrates and for the growth and the health of our body and these are called as foodstuffs so whatever we consume that gives energy and those things are called as foodstuffs. So nutrients are classified as macronutrients and micronutrients. So these are the two types of nutrients. In macronutrients we have all different types of foods, carbohydrates, proteins and fats. In micronutrients we have vitamins and minerals. Understood? Next we will see what is the need for nutrition to supply the energy required for doing work. Yes, of course we need energy to do any work and that energy is provided by nutrition. For growth and development of the body, nutrition is very very essential. To replace the damaged cells and to repair the tissues. If it is disturbed, if you get hurt, 
if you uh, if you have when you are riding a cycle and if you fall down your tissues are damaged so what happens to that place the cells are replaced by new cells and for that also you require nutrition to fight diseases so nowadays we are fighting against a lot of diseases for that you should have good amount of nutritious food you should have good amount of greens vegetables fruits so that your body can fight against diseases so these are all the need for nutrition next we are going to see the two different type of nutrition autotrophic nutrition and hydrotrophic nutrition autotrophic means by the word auto itself says that those organisms they can provide they prepare their food by themselves or called as autotrophic nutrition for example plants plants can reproduce and plants can produce and they prepare the food by themselves do you agree with me plants are autotrophs because why they produce the food by themselves heterotrophic means those organisms or any species which depend on other organisms for their food for their support for their protection and for their living they are called as heterotrophic nutrition is it clear students so the nutrition is divided into two different kinds autotrophic nutrition they produce they prepare their food by themselves heterotrophic they depend on other organisms next we will see the definition of autotrophic nutrition some organisms can produce their own food and thus they nourish themselves this is called autotrophic nutrition and students as i told plants are autotrophic how do plants produce their own food how they produce what is the kitchen in where they are producing their own food yes photosynthesis so what is the kitchen of the plant leaves leaves are the kitchen of the plant that they produce the food so by the process of photosynthesis plants produce their own food photosynthesis you can see the picture here yes so the rain drops are coming and it is getting spread all over the earth so the water is present underground it is sucked by the roots of the plant and the energy that is obtained from the air sun is what type of energy students light energy that light energy and the water from the soil the plants produce food by themselves so what is the food that the plants produce glucose and they also give oxygen for us yes so you have to protect your environment we take in oxygen and we give out carbon dioxide so we human beings as a population is increasing day by day we have to protect our environment by planting more trees then only you will get oxygen yes so plant more trees now we will see the process how photosynthesis takes place in leaves yes with the help of sunlight and chlorophyll this chlorophyll is a pigment that is present in the leaves make plants make their food in their leaves where do plants make their food in their leaves so we can say leaves as a kitchen of the plant yes using water and nutrients from the soil and carbon dioxide from the air they produce food and this process is called photosynthesis now what all the things the plants require for this sunlight chlorophyll and water nutrients water and nutrients they get from the soil and carbon dioxide 
that is present in the atmosphere they utilize and they give as oxygen for us this process is called photosynthesis now what are the things that happened we will see point by point plants convert light energy into chemical energy so that light energy which is obtained from the sun is converted into the food that is glucose water minerals and salts are absorbed by roots from the soil the leaves have a microscopic openings called stomata which takes carbon dioxide from the air as i told plants take carbon dioxide that is present in the atmosphere and they utilize and they give us oxygen but how do they take carbon dioxide how do it enter into the leaves by the presence of stomata these are the openings that are present in the leaves which can be seen only through microscope the chloroplast that is present in the leaves contain chlorophyll so that is a oval shaped box where it contains chlorophyll which absorbs sunlight and converts carbon dioxide and water water how does the plants absorb water from the soil and by this process they convert carbon dioxide and water into food by this process of photosynthesis oxygen is given out so six this is a chemical equation you have to write it like this because carbon dioxide plus water the molecular formula of carbon dioxide is co2 and the molecular formula of water is h2o we know this when this both combine each other they give glucose and the molecular formula for glucose is c6 h12 and o6 plus oxygen yes oxygen we get it and that food that is produced by the plant is stored in the leaves this is a figure of chloroplast this chloroplast you can see inside these are all essential for the absorption of sunlight this is very much essential for the absorption of sunlight now next we will see about the transport system of plants now we have seen how the plants prepare by themselves okay after that the plants have prepared food but before preparing food also they require water but how do the water reach to the leaves what is the process where the water is transported to the leaves that we are going to study in the transport system of plants yes there are two main structures involved in transporting system that is xylem and phylum what do the plants transport students tell me yes water nutrients very good xylem transports minerals and water from the roots very important from the roots to the aerial parts of the plant aerial means those parts which is present in the air so xylem that is the centermost part of the stem or root that absorbs the mineral and water from the roots to the other parts of the plant that is present in the air the phylum this transports the food from the leaves to the other parts of the plant you know as the food is prepared in the leaves this is transmitted the food after preparing food it is stored there and then it is transported to the other parts of the plant these are the structures the presence of xylem and phloem in the root the first structure you can see in the center there it is a xylem and it is surrounded by phloem in the stem 
so where all you can see the xylem and phloem root stem and leaves in these three you can find and they transport water minerals understood students now we will see how this transporting system happens in leaf with an example okay with a tissue paper i am going to show you how this transport system takes place in plants now i am going to demonstrate the presence of stomata in leaves see i have taken a leaf fresh leaf a bowl of water now i'm going to place this leaf this is a dorsal surface and this is a ventral surface now i'm going to place this leaf inside now observe what you can see inside observe it carefully students yes can you see some bubbles can you see some bubbles yes you can see it here now these are all due to the presence of stomata in leaves the air that comes out from the leaves understood the presence of stomata yes now next what we are going to see is the transport system of plants for this three glasses of water i have taken this is with red ink i have filled this is plain water and this is also plain water i am going to put two three drops of ink in it observe it yes so what are the transport system of plants as i have told just now xylem and phloem so this represents like xylem so you can see the water color it keep on increasing like this only the water that is present in the soil is absorbed to the tip of the leaves by the xylem i have taken another tissue paper and inserting into the ink solution see how how this transport system is gradually increasing you can see see the color change see the color change it is keeping on increasing the level so like this only xylem and phloem they transport the minerals and water from the root from the soil to the tip of the leaves yes students now we are going to see we all know that plants are producing carbohydrates and proteins so the carbohydrates are produced by the process of photosynthesis and the synthesis of proteins how does the plants take place this so they produce carbohydrates and proteins so carbohydrates contain carbon atom hydrogen atom and oxygen atom so these three atoms are the main nutrients that are present in the carbohydrates but in proteins what are all essential for the synthesis of proteins is carbon hydrogen oxygen and nitrogen as we know through the process of photosynthesis plants they can produce the atoms of carbon hydrogen and oxygen but where do nitrogen come from for the synthesis of proteins they require nitrogen but from where does this nitrogen come students they nitrogen is present in the atmosphere yes but how the nitrogen that is present in the atmosphere is easily available for the plants no they are have to be converted to compounds that conversion of nitrogen to other compounds that is called nitrogen fixation so that takes place by many process so first you understood understand that how plants produce carbohydrates and proteins so through the process of photosynthesis they produce carbohydrates and for the synthesis of proteins that nitrogen comes from the nitrogen cycle nitrogen fixation 
nitrogen fixation nitrogen in the air has to be converted into compounds that is to be fixed fixed means it has to be converted into the readily available form for the plants that is done by two mechanisms they are biological fixation of nitrogen and the second one is atmospheric fixation of nitrogen biological means through microorganisms and atmospheric means through the process of lightning biological fixation by two different kinds of microorganisms first one rhizobium that is present in the root nodules of leguminous plants so this rhizobium is a different type of microorganism that benefit the leguminous plants and the leguminous plants also they also take nitrogen with the help of rhizobium so they both are different species but they benefit both of them so like this you should also have a good interpersonal relationship with your family and with your friends and in the society yes and the second microorganism that is present in the soil is acetobacter this is a microorganism that fixes nitrogen biologically they convert the atmospheric nitrogen into nitrates so first you have to be clear that nitrogen fixation means the conversion of into compounds that takes place by two process first one is a biological process second one is a atmospheric fixation biological process takes place by rhizobium and acetobacter and atmospheric we will see now atmospheric fixation of nitrogen through lightning nitrogen react with oxygen the nitrogen it is present in the atmosphere that react with oxygen to give nitric oxide this nitric oxide is oxidized that means addition of oxygen or removal of hydrogen atom to nitric oxide gives nitrogen dioxide this nitrogen dioxide is converted into nitric acid when it gets mixed up with the rain during rain this nitrogen dioxide that is present in the atmosphere by the presence of rain it get converted into nitric acid this nitric acid react with minerals in the soil and they form nitrogen salt so this nitrogen salt that is present in the soil is very much essential for the plants and by this process those plants which cannot utilize the nitrogen fixation through biological process so they fix through atmospheric nitrogen fixation so those who cannot do in that method they prefer to fix nitrogen anyway plants require nitrogen for the synthesis of what proteins so they prepare in another way the next one we are going to see about the symbiotic nutrition two or more plants live together two or more plants they live together to fulfill their needs of nutrition protection and support if you are living in a colony even plants also live in colony they benefit both of them not only animals live in colonies for their protection for their support but even plants they also they live with other plants to fulfill what the nutrition some of the other nutrition is benefited by other species so they take that nutrition which cannot be produced by themselves and with benefit each other's help example the best example for this symbiotic nutrition what we can say is a fungi that supply the minerals and water to plants and in turn the plants give nutrients to fungi so these both are benefited how they both are benefited fungi 
and the plants the fungi which is presented along with the plants they supply minerals and water to the plants yes and in turn the plants will give nutrients for the fungi that is why the fungi is growing healthy but it is a good fungi okay example for the symbiotic nutrition is a lichen an example of symbiosis where the algae and the fungi they benefit each other so this lichen is a plant so that benefit the fungi that is living along with it so this type of nutrition is called as symbiotic nutrition so all plants any or the other method they intake nutrition understood students so today we have learnt about nutrition autotrophic nutrition transport system in plants biological fixation of nitrogen and symbiotic nutrition you understood all these things okay now let us see how much you all have understood what is nutrition the process of taking in food in living organisms is called nutrition what are the two main types of nutrition autotrophic nutrition and heterotrophic nutrition identify the xylem and the phloem in this picture you need to identify okay i have given two cross sections of the stem and the roots you need to identify where is the xylem and where is the phloem application i have given an interactive game for you based on biological fixation okay go to the link that is given in the description box and play this game you will really like to like to play homework take the stem of pumpkin okay with two three leaves and add two to three drops of ink in a flask and put that stem into it identify the xylem and phloem present in that okay just cut it and place it in a flask and see what changes you can see whether you are able to find out the xylem and phloem thank you children thank you so much for patiently watching my lesson thank you once again